My name is Chris Frank. I'm the founder of IdeaVisor LLC. We help companies use the patent landscape to drive innovation. Uh, just a couple seconds about us. We work with top inventors and innovation teams at Fortune 500 companies and technology startups. And what we found is this, what separates top inventors from everyone else is they simply know more than everyone else about the competitive landscape, the technology landscape, and especially the patent landscape. They still use the same innovation tools to do things better, but their deeper understanding of the landscape is behind everything they do. All of this information is publicly available, but it's the complexity of the patent database structure, the opacity of the language used in patents, and the sheer number of patent documents out there that make it a difficult source of information for, for people to extract value from. So that's where we come in. We translate the patent landscape into actionable insights that drive innovation. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to look at the Waymo patent portfolio. And here's kind of a quick chart of exactly what we do. We use the patent system exactly the way it was designed to be used 200 and some years ago. Uh, what we do is we take a patent and we extract value and insights from it. Uh, for each patent, we extract the patent problem statement. What problem are they trying to solve? And then the solution statement, how did they solve that problem? And then once we've looked at the entire portfolio, we break it up into categories of problems. What categories are they trying to, to address? And categories of solutions. How are they trying to address and solve the problems in those categories? Your job then from the innovation point of view is to look at these insights and turn them into opportunities for innovation. Are they solving the right problems? What problems have they missed? Uh, can you more clearly define the problem that they might have to find more abstractly. Are they actually solving the problem or are they merely putting a band-aid on a symptom? Can you solve it better? And then at the category level as well, are they focusing on the right categories of problems? What categories might they have missed? Uh, have they actually solved the problems in that category and what categories of problems can you solve better? That is how to use these insights to come up with better ideas. Exactly how the patent system was designed the patent has to teach you how to make and use the invention so you can read it and come up with a better idea. A uh, quick little uh, two minute patent primer here, uh, just uh, to give you a little bit of background. The typical process for getting a patent is you file the patent application on a given date. 18 months later, it will publish as a patent application, not an actual patent. And you can identify these publications because they have a four digit uh, be, uh, initial sequence that looks like a year because it is a year. So you, currently you'll see US 2019. That means it was published in 2019. It's not an actual issued patent. And then usually somewhere in the three to five year period after filing, it will grant as a US patent. Uh, patents are granted in sequential order. We are in the 10 millions right now, but you'll see some patents in the case of Waymo that are in the nine millions and even a few in the eight millions. Uh, that's the general process for a patent, but it doesn't always work that way. Here is a quick example. Uh, a couple of years ago, when I didn't really have that much of a vested interest in this area, uh, there was a lot of talk about neural networks. Um, actually, I can tell you when this happened. It was somewhere in October of 2017. There was a lot of talk about neural networks, and so I just did a quick query of the Waymo patent portfolio and I was able to make the statement, Waymo doesn't appear to have any neural network patents in their portfolio, even though there are, there's all this talk of, the, of this approach. Uh, but I did, uh, I did hedge my statement saying, well, they may have filed the patents and it hasn't published yet, or they may be keeping it a trade secret, or they might not be, in, may be actually applying it to self-driving cars, who knows? Well, now we know. Uh, there was actually one that granted, uh, there's a few that we'll be looking at today, one that granted in July of 2018. And you might also notice that uh, it never actually published at that 18 month period. And that's because if you file only in the United States, you can elect not to have your application published, which appears to be the case here. It also got issued faster than that three to five year period. So what I said before is a guideline and there's always going to be exceptions. Uh, taking it to the step further, uh, recently in the, in the innovation, or I'm sorry, the information, there was a quote that 
The Waymo vans uh, in Phoenix area are having trouble with many unprotected left turns. And so, just like I did before, I did a quick look at the patent portfolio. There are not any patents specific to unprotected left turns that are currently issued or published. Once again, that doesn't mean they're not working on it. I cannot imagine that they're not working on it and not filing on it and not trying to solve it as fast as they can. But nonetheless, there's nothing in the current database that we're looking at today addressing that problem. That is just how we have to look at patent information as imperfect information. It is data and it has all the limitations of a data source. And so having that in mind, we have to, we have to infer certain things uh, based upon what we know outside of the patent landscape as well. So that is our quick little patent primer because we're not worried about patent law right now. We're worried about just what do these documents mean to us in terms of interpretation. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We looked at every single patent in the portfolio and we broke it up into these one page slides. Uh, actually, we're going to break it up even, even further into groups. Uh, we took each patent, so here's an issue patent in the nine millions use of prior maps for estimation of lane boundaries. And we turned it into a problem statement, how to estimate lane boundaries using prior maps and a solution statement. How do I compare sense, or I must compare sense data to prior map information in order to identify map reference points based on a confidence buffer calculation. So we're going to do this for each patent. So what you want to imagine is that we are the land surveyor giving you a lay of the land, the landscape, and you are the person that if you find areas of interest, categories or specific patents of interest, you're the person that's going to have to do the deep dive and read these claims here. These claims are the actual elements of the invention that is new, novel, uh, non-obvious and useful. Um, one other point I guess might be worth just throwing out here. Um, there, there of course is just general talk in the world about how software is not patentable, but uh, you're going to read through a couple hundred documents here today and they're gonna look a lot like software patents. The, now once again, not, not to get into the legal aspects too much, but uh, the way that Waymo appears to be getting around that is they will have the, the software algorithm for taking care of whatever driving problem there is, and then they will end it by saying, and then driving the car according to that algorithm uh, in short. And so by causing a, a physical manifestation of that algorithm that gets around this software problem. I know I'm oversimplifying it, but nonetheless, uh, these are going to look like software patents, but they're not, at least from the point of view of not being patentable. Okay, let's get started. Here's our outline. Here's what we're going to talk about today. We have broken up the portfolio into these five categories. There's a category of map elements. There's a category of, once I have this map in mind, what are the different traffic elements I might run into, such as stoplights, road signs, construction zones, pedestrians, weather, emergency vehicles. And then taking it a step further, how do I actually drive or navigate through this world with all of these traffic elements? Uh, what if something affects my visibility? What if there are blind spots, braking and stopping problems, lane changes, parked vehicles? How do I space myself around other vehicles? How do I guess how another vehicle is going to behave and so on? Um, and then the 5.0 section, sensing elements, this takes it to the more abstract level of how do I identify an object and its location and its motion. And then 6.0 is the more fun and exciting user experience. How does a actual normal hum human being interact with this technology? So that's going to be our categories that we're going to look at today. And you can see I've got numbers behind them. That's how many documents are in each of these categories and subcategories.